hundred year old building that they redid. That was a uh, busy place because they had a lot of gambling and all kind of uh, blues out here and people would load the boats down here called rice about. And then when they got through loading and unloading boats, it would come up. And I was telling you about park meters that they got scattered out downtown. This is one of them. Well, they started a school right here for the free man so that they can teach them how to read and write. The Middle Museum. And over here is the Atlanta Southern Folklore right now. And then we got BB Antone. He's opened up in LA and all, a whole bunch of places. There's Blue City Cafe over here. We got different little shops and things like Memphis Music. We got a Memphis Police Museum up here that is actually uh, 100 years or 150 years of Memphis police history, but it is a working police station, but they welcome all visitors. It is free. We've got A. Swab up here. A. Swab, as far as the oldest department store in Memphis, uh, started in 1976. Going in there is like a step back to the 30s. And his motto is, if you can't find an A. Swab, you're better off without it. They got voodoo charms, they got love potions, they got all kinds of stuff right in there. We're going to take about a 10 minute break let That's nice, I've just got your head. Say exactly where you are. Got your face and I've got BB King's. Right close. All of Bill Street's on a historic register. That's why these buildings are being held up. The front's going to be held up. So like I said, you can do whatever you want to behind it. This guy chose to do the garden spot back there. They had uh, limousines and all this. They had a uh, police escort last night. But they got these people from Ireland to come in here. The dignitaries from Ireland. And they're having a big St. Patrick's Day here because he's an Irish bar there. They actually flew them from Ireland over here to participate into the festivities they're playing. Oh, really? oh, so they had all these uh, plays and limos and all yeah. coming down here. I didn't know who it was. I thought maybe the president or somebody was coming. Oh, yeah. Sunday's afternoon. That's the man that laid down the music on it. That is a statue of W.C. Candy right there. There used to be a saloon right up here on the corner, and that's where he wrote the Memphis Blues and the St. Louis Blues on the uh, cigar counter in there. And up here on the right, it's got the Bill Street Blues Museum. Well, that's the old days of theater. They built this when they had vaudeville acts. And then they built this one over here when the head pictures come out. This was the new days on the left. This is the Visitors Information Center here. They have all kind of information about Memphis. This little house over here on the left is what we call a shotgun house. And that's the house that W.C. Handy was raised in. When gambling was going on, they used to put a basket in all the gambling houses. And if you gambled, you had to contribute to the, the church there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't care about the gambling, but they cared about the, the money. Yeah. And this park right black millionaire in Tennessee, and he built this park here. So back in the days when blacks weren't allowed into the city park, he built the park here before they'd have a park. And he had some columns over there. If you notice a lot of this land in here vacant, 
because in the 1968, this was so-called ghetto or slums of the city almost. But during the 68 riots, a lot of these buildings got burnt down. See that church up there on the left? Last speech here in the city. I've uh, been to the mountaintop speech. Yeah. That's where he uh, headed at, right there. All down at the other end of town. And in the 1950s, downtown Memphis was a booming metropolis down here. A lot of people came here to shop, and a lot of people came here because of business and everything. But the main business in the 50s were cotton. We had everything revolved around cotton. And in the 50s, they came out with synthetic materials. With the synthetic materials, like polyester and the rayon and all down here, they took up some of the old uh, theaters we had down here. We used to have about 20 theaters, now we got one. So people didn't have no reason to come down here for entertainment. And during this time, all the uh, old hotels, like this one up here, Hotel Chesco, and a whole bunch of others, all closed down. The mid-70s, because of all this going on, the riots and everything, and it was a swap, he's the only one left open. The only thing going downtown was just about was lawyers that was going in court or the bank people that worked down here. Everything else closed down. But in the 80s, they started new projects like the uh, pyramid, they got the trolley system, they started converting some of these old warehouses into uh, still continuing today. This area of town down here is on the south end. It's part of the, be on the last of the uh, things that get redone. So they're starting to do all their, everything up towards Bill Street, toward the center of town, back the other way towards the fence down by the pyramid. We're going to go down by the, the Rain Hotel. And one is so you boycotting it. One everybody else boycotted the Civil Rights Museum. Well, she thinks they should have took the nine million dollars instead of building a museum, a shrine for Martin Luther King. They should have built a place for homeless people and a place where they could train to get off the streets. She's been out here two thousand uh, six hundred and ninety-two days. Her name is Jacqueline Smith, and she lives out here all the time. And that's her right here. It's 2,692, isn't it? No? Okay. 2,614, But her name is Jacqueline Smith. So. Even though she is boycotting things like that, she has the right to do what she thinks is right. Yeah. But over here, where the reef is, is where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr standing when he was shot. And James Earl Ray was staying in a, what they call a flop house. And a flop house is where they, as a boarding house that's actually low rent and everybody shared the same bathroom. And that was up here but you can't see it because the trees and everything covers that up. Well this was an old Piggly Wiggly right here. That's the house of Sybil Shepherd, the actress and model. She's got her own TV show called Sybil out now. So that's her house. He's going to cancel the march they had planned until a few days later. Well, when he came back, they talked him into moving into the Lorraine because, like, Lorraine is, uh, you know, like, it was more of a thing for black men that was poor. This was a real rich hotel, and it didn't look good for a black man trying to get poor men more money, so they actually talked him into moving to the Lorraine. Well, the next night when he checked in is the night he got shot down there. So he stayed in, okay? Yeah, because it's a whole lot more secure. Marine Hospital. This was a merchant marine hospital. It was built for everybody that 
was a merchant marine or a longshore, anybody had anything to do with the water, they would uh, get free treatment here. It didn't never cost them anything. <laughs> it's down used for an Army Reserve post at this end. These mounds over here on the left and right in front of us on the That's left, nice these are Indian mounds yeah, that actually uh, been put here about 10,000 years ago. During the history, we had different armies come in here, and almost all the armies built a fort here because, like, there's some high ground and had a good look over the Mississippi River. And one of the armies took out all the artifacts out of there, all the Indian artifacts, and stored gunpowder and things. And you can see a little door up there on the side that they built. And this is the Ornamental Metal Museum. And right up there under that little shed is where they got the statues of Elvis. You see it? Yeah, give us a couple of seconds on that one. You want to get out and go up there? Like the ducks, but I think everybody here is the same timber or not. Who's the left, Jerry? Yeah, no, that's where a lot of that movie was shot in there, in that firm. This okay. is the building that they used for when they was like recopping the theater, is where Elvis sold his popcorn at when he was in the concession stand. So that used to be a theater right there, and they made it into a parking garage. WDIA or WHRK. And that WDIA was the first all-black uh, format station. I hope, like I said, I hope you did enjoy it. Now I go to the Radisson. Y'all at the Radisson, right? Yep. Yeah. I see people will be up here, and I start heading out, and they don't realize that I'm not coming back, and then they get about halfway out, they say, where's that town? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm glad y'all came back. Yeah.